What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's some of my final thoughts ahead of the game week 29 deadline. So I'm going to go through the latest press conference information, then answer some of your questions as well, and take a quick look at my own team. And I've got my free hit active finally. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and let's get into it. So I think we've got to start with Aston Villa after Ollie Watkins went off injured in their match against Ajax last night. It is worth saying that he got injured carried on playing, scored a goal, and then went off after that. So it wasn't bad enough to force him off straight away, but it was bad enough that he had to go off eventually. Now, in terms of press conferences for Unai Emery, there's one tweet going around saying that there's no press conference today on Friday. There's other information that says there was a press conference last night, but the quotes are embargoed until this afternoon. Either way, I've not seen anything new apart from what was said last night. So that's what I'm going to talk through. Um, so Unai Emery on Ollie Watkins, we don't know exactly what the issue is. Maybe for Sunday he could be available. He also said that Diego Carlos has a hamstring issue. He might not be available for Sunday. I don't think that makes a huge difference to most people's FPL picks. I guess it's much more likely that Matty Cash plays in game week 29 uh, for any of you that aren't free hitting. But back to Watkins, he said he could be available for Sunday but it is only a cut. We will wait and see tomorrow and Saturday. We are speaking before each match about how important Ollie Watkins is. So he's got a cut on his leg, which I guess when you say it out loud doesn't sound that bad, but you don't know how deep it is, stitches, will that affect him playing, etc. I'll be honest, I think Ollie Watkins will start. He's just one of those players, I saw someone compare him yesterday to Bruno Fernandes, that just always plays. He's so very rarely injured that even when he is a doubt, he still ends up being in that first 11. So if I had to guess right now on the information we've got, he will start. So if you're not free hitting and you've got Ollie Watkins in your team, which most people will, I would just risk him. If you're on free hit, you could completely remove him from your squad and just hope that he doesn't play. But I think the thing to do for most people is have him, have him, have him in, very easy to say, in your first 11, and then just have a good option on your bench. Because obviously with the free hit, you've got the luxury of having a full squad of playing players. And the reason that I would have him in and then a good first bench option is because if he does play, he's just such a good option, right? This, If it was a choice between Morris, Chris Wood, and Fafana, and Fafana was a bit of a doubt going into this game, week, which he's not, by the way, but if he was, you wouldn't risk it, right? You'd just pick one of the other two. But if Watkins plays, he's so much better than most of the other options. It's worth just having him in. And on a free hit, like I said, you've got that luxury that other people don't of having a good first sub. So if you're in 3-4-3, you just have a good midfielder. If you're on 3-5-2, you've got a good forward, right? So someone like Morris or Alanga or Kudus or Pakatar, whoever it is, is waiting to come on if Watkins doesn't play. Of course, there is the possibility that Watkins doesn't start and he's on the bench and he comes on for a cameo but again I think he's such a good option for game week 29 that I'm willing to take that risk that either he plays 80 to 90 minutes or he just doesn't play at all so as it stands we don't really know too much more than what came out last night I think he'll play but it's not a guarantee so with Spurs Ange Postacoglu confirmed that Van de Ven is going to be missing for game week 29 he's not available he did go on to say that the injury isn't really that bad hopefully he'll be back after the international break and obviously Spurs have got pretty good fixtures in game week 30 all the way up until 32. So it's Luton at home, West Ham away and Forest at home. So with Van de Ven, obviously if you're on a free hit, you're not picking him anyway. Uh, if you don't own him, then you're not bringing him into your team. If you've already got him, I guess the question is, is he worth a minus four? And I'm not sure he is because if he's back for game week 30, then he's okay to play in those next three fixtures. So if you take a minus four for a different Spurs defender, you're kind of hoping that gets repaid straight away. So I'm not sure it's worth a hit. Would I do it like a Van de Ven to Udogi or Poro? I probably would because that's just like the way I like to play in blank game weeks. But I don't think it's something you have to do. The other interesting news was Richarlison. Apparently he's trained. Uh, Postacoglu said if he pulls up okay, should be available for tomorrow. Now, I don't for one second think that he's going to start necessarily i think spurs have done okay without him i still think he's probably first choice number nine and some will move to the left but it's not a guarantee that happens in game week 29 i certainly wouldn't put him on free hit if you own him i would definitely risk him even if that's a bench appearance or i don't think he's worth a transfer out now if you've held on to him i guess the knock-on for anyone on free hit is like the punts on kudasevsky brendan johnson Werner, etc if richarlison does end up being in that squad 
that's just another player that can take minutes off of the others. Even if he doesn't start, like let's say Brendan Johnson's on the left, well, Richarlison might come on after 60 minutes, right, for the last 30. And obviously then Brendan, I was trying to work out the mass then, uh, and obviously then Brendan Johnson just doesn't have as much time on the pitch. I'm just not sure it's worth it. If you're really tempted to go for a punt on free hit, fair enough. But I just think picking a Spurs defender makes a lot of sense. So Richarlison back, that's obviously very good for anyone that also wants him for game week 30 because, again, the fixtures are pretty good. So if you were someone that's held on to him, happy days. I don't think he's going to start in game week 29. I think it'll probably be too soon. I think he probably will come on if he's in the squad and he'll take minutes off of those other players. So just on Brentford, Thomas Frank said that Regulon should be fit and available, which is obviously good news for game week 29 for Burnley away. Um, I also saw this tweet yesterday from the Talk Bees Twitter account, which is usually pretty good for Brentford news. And they said, as it stands, Sergio Regulon will return to the Brentford team for Saturday's trip to Burnley after being in full training since Tuesday. Now, returning to the team doesn't guarantee a first 11 place, right? He could just be in the squad. But the fact that he only missed out last week due to a minor hamstring issue and has been training since Tuesday, supposedly, that looks pretty good, I would say, especially when Thomas Frank has said he should be fit and available, which is exactly what he said last week um, when he was missing that game in game week 28. So if you have if you already own Regadon and you're not free hitting, I think it's pretty clear you just play him and hope for the best. If you're on free hit, there is maybe still a slight discussion to be had about whether to play it safe and go for someone else. But I don't see a huge amount of obvious other defenders to go for that are going to guarantee you a clean sheet, guarantee you minutes and attack and returns. So I'm probably going to put him still in my free hit team. Uh, on Imbermo, he is apparently touch and go. He's just not an option for free hit. I have seen some people um, considering him, but it's not even a guarantee that he's going to be in the squad. So if I just find what Thomas Frank said here. Uh, he said he's very close. I have a decision to make to maybe involve him in the squad this weekend. He's been on the grass for a week. He looks good, and he's one of our best players. I just, uh, sorry, I need to find out if it's just a touch too early or to bring him in for the game against Burnley. So he's progressed well, he goes on to say, um, but I don't think, like for a free hit, it's just, it's just not enough guarantee of even a place in the squad, let alone a place in the start 11. So I just wouldn't go there. Uh, and Norgar's not available, which I guess isn't fantastic news for Brentford in general, but probably doesn't, affect your fpl picks too much so regulon if you've got him great you just play him if you're on free hit you probably still go for him if you were keen anyway i guess the only other scenario is if you're not free hitting and you don't own him i'm not sure i would buy him it's man united at home brighton at home and villa away afterwards anyway and none of those fixtures guarantee a clean sheet and like i said in burmo i just wouldn't go there this week so the Nottingham Forest press conference was yesterday, and annoyingly, from what I heard of it, there wasn't really any discussion about injuries and fitness concerns and stuff like that. And I think that could have been useful this week, because on free hit, a lot of people will be looking uh, to maybe go for a punt on Chris Wood, who did play 90 minutes in game week 28 against Brighton. But there is competition there from someone like Awani, who could get a start or maybe even come on for Chris Wood later into that match. I think because of the recent minutes for Awani, he's definitely struggling with something, right? 18 minutes against Brighton, 25 against Liverpool, 45 against Villa. Hasn't made it past 70 minutes since game week 23. So if I had to predict, I think Chris Wood will start, but I don't think I'm confident enough of that to take the punt in my own free hit team. If we get any word that Chris Wood is starting, then that's a little bit different, uh, but I'm just not sure that I will personally go there. There's a lot of other good forwards this week too. So Chris Wood, I think he's a perfectly reasonable gamble if you want to go there. I'm just not sure that I will do that. Um, just on Alanga and hudson Adoy being benched in game week 28, Nuno was asked about that. And he said, versus Brighton in game week 28, the plan was to have an extra midfielder to control the middle of the park. He also went on to say that that didn't really work too well. Um, and, he, and he said, large spells of the second half was much better more dominant, more aggressive, and more pace. So for anyone looking for a punt on someone like Alanga in game week 29, I'm pretty confident that he will start, right? So he'll be on one of the wings, probably hudson Odoi on the other, and then Gibbs-White as a number 10. I think any of those players you could look at. I really like Alanga because his underlying stats are pretty decent. It's just how much you want to gamble on those minutes because it is not a guarantee. Just because I think that's what will happen, and I've seen a lot of other people predicting that as well, doesn't guarantee it, right? I think because of the minutes of a lot of um, Forest players over the last few weeks, there is definitely a risk there. Even if they start, how long will, be, uh, will they be on the pitch for? 60, 70, 80 minutes, 
You just don't know. But for a one-week punt against Luton, bearing in mind that most non-free hitters won't go for Forest players, I kind of like it. So my prediction would be that Alanga starts, and obviously Gibbs White is pretty much nailed under Nuno, and probably penalty taker as well. Both of those options look good. Chris Wood possibly as well. Like I said, it depends how much you want to um, kind of risk it because there are, especially in midfield and, and the forward line, a lot of players that you guarantee minutes from that could do well as uh, as well. So like Kudus, Pakatar, etc. So when you are going for like a Gibbs White or an Alanga over a Morris for Luton, you obviously are risking it a little bit. But in a one-week punt, it could pay off. So just quickly on West Ham, they did play their match last night against Freiburg. Won 5 0 too. All of Kudus, Pakatar, and Boeing got in on the attacking returns, which is nice ahead of game week 29 if you're considering them. Um, David Moyes did speak, I think it was this morning, uh, confirmed that Corne is out. I don't think many people were thinking about him for free hit, but he did talk about Emerson as well. And he said, late call to see how he is. He's not got a serious injury, but just a little bit of a groin strain. So we'll wait to see how he is. We're not sure yet. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about him is some people might be thinking about going for him as a punt on free hit, quite attacking, or maybe going for Cresswell instead, who also scored last night. I just think that quote would put me off because if Emerson is fit, then he might start, right? David Moyes just might put him in the team. But obviously there is a chance that doesn't happen. He could be on the bench, come on later. I just think if you're looking at a West Ham defender, I wouldn't go for Emerson um, or Cresswell. I would just ignore it, right? They're not, there's not that much upside that it's worth risking players that you don't even know are going to start. Uh, otherwise, there wasn't really a huge amount about the players that we would be looking at on free hit. Kudos, Pakatar, and Jared Bowen all came through the game last night without injuries, as far as we know, so they should be good to pick. Worth noting that Ward Prowse was benched for that game, um, so he's definitely not an option. And if he's not going to be on the pitch for you know, very much that game against Villa, which is possible, right? He might get brought in, but we don't know that for sure. Um, Pakatar presumably is definitely going to be on penalties as well. And I know a lot of people think he will be anyway. I, I also think that but there is a chance if Ward Prowse is on the pitch that he might take it instead. But given the lineup last night, how well they did, I don't see Ward Prowse necessarily getting a huge amount of minutes. All right, let's get into some of your questions. So I have nine players playing in game week 29 and zero free transfers. Are there any players outside of the obvious three Spurs that are worth a minus four? Now, I'm free hitting this week, but if I wasn't, I'd be very open to taking multiple hits to get as close to 11 players as possible because it's not risk-free, right? You could easily take a minus four this week and it doesn't pay itself back, but I always feel like the risk is minimized in a blank game week. If you're taking out a player that doesn't play, they can't punish you and they've got no fixture, so they can't get any points. So I always think of it as the player I'm bringing in is almost guaranteed to get me two points. Of course, before anyone says it, you could play them. They get no attacking returns and they get a yellow card. It could be a one-pointer. They could even get sent off. These things can happen, but I tend to see it that the player I'm bringing in is going to get me at least two points. So let's say, for example, you had, I don't know, any player that's not playing this week. I don't know, Pedro Neto, right, from Wolves, who's not going to be an option. He's injured, etc., if you take him out this week for Gibbs White, even if you don't play Gibbs White after game week 29, you're just hoping that Gibbs White gets five points or more. I would personally take that risk in a blank game week that he can do that. Of course, like I've just said, he could get two points. You've taken a minus four, so you're two points down. I personally am very open to taking that risk because I feel like the chances of you getting massively punished are quite low. Even better, if that player is also helpful to you in game week 30 or 31, depending on when you're obviously looking to wildcard. A lot of people watching this will be thinking about wildcarding in 31. So could you take a hit this week that will also help you in game week 30? If so, I'd probably do it. And there's no cap on where I'd be willing to go, right? In previous blank game weeks, I've taken like minus 12s, minus 16s, just to get players in that are also not only helpful this week, but also in future game weeks as well. The only time that I wouldn't do it is if for it's a if it's for a complete like dud of a player that very very rarely gets attack and returns is not that likely I probably wouldn't do it for them like if it's a I don't know someone might be looking at a defensive midfielder or something like that I also wouldn't do it if you're removing a player that's very useful to you in game week 30 again I'm not sure I've got a great example of that because obviously Arsenal players play Man City and and vice versa so that's not great let's say you've got a Liverpool player right like Luis Diaz who's going to probably start in game week 30 against Brighton at home. Good fixture. Would I take him out for a minus four this week? Not necessarily. I'd be a little bit less keen on that. But any player that's not 
that useful to you in 30, I'd be tempted to do it and just hope you get kind of positive variance, essentially. You get a bunch of returns from the players you bring in. I guess just quickly on which kind of players they would be outside of Son, Madison, and a Spurs defender. Um, like Gibbs White, even Alanga, I don't mind. Uh, obviously, Tony at Brentford. I'd probably be less happy about taking multiple minus fours for defenders, it has to be said. I'd mostly be looking at attackers. Possibly Luton players like Morris, although remember that in game week 30, they play Spurs away, so it's not exactly an easy fixture. Uh, West Ham, Bowen, Pakatar, Kudus, Villa, Douglas Louise, Bailey, uh, etc. Uh, I'm going to say Watkins if he's fit because I'm recording this question before I've um, heard from Unai Emery's press conference. But I guess possibly not Watkins if he's a bit of a doubt. Um, but ultimately, yeah, there's a lot of players like, like Muniz, for example, at Fulham. You know, even if you don't necessarily need him in game week 30, if that hit potentially gets you points this week and then saves you money next week in 30 to be able to make a big move like getting Salah in for free, that could be worth it as well. So it's not necessarily about specific players although i've just run through a bunch of them it's more sorry it's also to do with who you're taking out but i am very open to hits in blank gaming so i know some people hate them but i love them because i feel like the risk of it going wrong is definitely minimized but obviously you could lose points right that i need to kind of make that clear you could take a minus 16 and only make eight points back and suddenly you're eight down but again i'd be willing to take the risk for a bunch of attackers so is playing your attackers against your defenders on a free hit as big a deal as some people make it sound? And the simple answer is no. It's not a big deal whatsoever. The only thing you should be doing is the same as every other game week, trying to get as many points as possible. So let me use Brentford and Burnley as an example. If you're looking at your defender options and you think that Regulon is one of the best three picks, then he should go into your team. If you're then looking at your forwards and thinking out of all the options on a 3-4-3, I think Fafana is one of the top three players to go for, then he should be in your team as well, even though he's playing against Regadon. Because as much as the hope will be that if you've picked Regadon, he gets a clean sheet, it might not happen. He might go and get you an assist, and Fafana might go and score a goal or two, right? So having both of those players might make sense if you think they are part of the top three options in their positions. But on free hit, people tend to play a little bit different because it's one week only. They're willing to take more of a risk and they're looking for that high ceiling upside. So they'll go for, say, Brentford defenders. And because they're hoping they get a clean sheet, they'll go different with their attackers and hope they get the best of both worlds. It might be that they ignore the Burnley attacker who goes and scores and they pick the Brentford defender and they go and concede. And actually, they lose out in both situations. But that's how people think the psychology on a free hit for a lot of FPL managers is different. Ultimately, I wouldn't I wouldn't make a choice that I think is definitely worse, but if I think it's close, I will go for that um option of not having my attackers play my defenders, right? So for example, if I had Regulon and I was looking between Fafana and Morris at Luton and I didn't have any Forest defenders, then I probably wouldn't be looking at it thinking well Fafana is much better than Morris, right? I just don't think he is. So I'd probably pick Morris instead. But there's no reason you have to do that, right? At some point this week, you are probably going to have, if you're on free hit, one attacker playing one defender. For example, I like, I've just said for example like a million times, I like a Nottingham Forest attacker because they're getting to play against Luton, but I like Doughty because he's so attacking. But obviously, you know, if my attacker scores, then they've wiped out the clean sheet. Then I'm hoping for an attacking return, which could happen. So it's not a big a deal as some people make it sound. And ultimately, it probably won't be. A massive factor in how well your free hit does so I, I guess the summary is don't make a choice that's much worse just because then they're not playing against your defender but if it's close you could opt to you know make sure that doesn't happen basically so i know man city aren't playing this week but some of you might still be deciding about whether or not to take harland out of your teams if you're not free hitting so this question goes is harland still essential Tight schedule coming up, and he has to face Real Madrid. So if you haven't already seen the Champions League draw, Man City have once again got Real Madrid, this time in the uh, quarterfinals. The first thing I will say is we still, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, we still have not seen Haaland rested in the Premier League outside of when he's been injured or when the league has been wrapped up. So the end of last season when Man City had the league won with a couple of games to go, Haaland started to get rested. They were still in Europe. Apart from that, he plays every single time, right? He always starts. Sometimes he comes off early if the game is wrapped up and won. But when that happens, 
he's often on the score sheet, right? That's He's part of the reason why the game is already won. So I just want to say that straight away because there's a lot of talk about Haaland rotation. And I'm not saying it can't happen. Of course it could. They've got Alvarez there. We know Pep likes to rotate players at times. But we haven't actually seen it with Haaland apart from when he's been an injury doubt or just come back from injury. So that's worth saying. Uh, in terms of facing Real Madrid, I looked at last season. Haaland played... So they had Bayern Munich, I think it was, in the quarterfinals last year. Haaland played 45 minutes in the game in the Premier League between those two legs, and that was against Leicester. The reason he only played 45 minutes because he had two goals by half time, and Man City were absolutely cruising in that game, so he was able to bring him off. So he still got a good score. Against Real Madrid, which I think was the semi finals, um, they had a game against Everton in between the two legs, and he played 78 minutes and got a goal. So. I know he's playing Real Madrid. I know people are, and basically the reason this question has come up is because Luton in game week 33, who Man City have, is the fixture in between the first and second leg against Real Madrid. And so people are thinking he could get rotated. It's definitely possible. Right? I wouldn't rule it out. But everything we've seen so far tells me that he's going to start that game, right? If he plays the first leg against Real Madrid and it's a really tight game and he picks up a little bit of a knock, will Pep uh, risk him? Probably not. But if he comes through unscathed, then I think he probably starts against Luton. So is he still essential? No, nobody is essential. But I still think he's a really good option. The one thing I would say to you to do is have a look through the next few game weeks, game weeks 30, 31, 32, before that fixture against Luton, and decide how many times you're going to captain Harlan. That probably gives you a good indication of how much he's needed in your team. So game week 30, I probably won't captain him. I mean, he's never a bad option at home. But it's Arsenal. That's going to be a pretty tough game. You've got Son against Luton at home. You've got Salah against Brighton at home. Both good alternatives. In game week 31, Man City have got Aston Villa at home. And Liverpool have got Sheffield United at home, right? So if Salah's fit, most people are going to probably captain him. And then in game week 32, it's Crystal Palace away for Man City. And for Spurs, it's Forest at home. So you could look at Son again. Uh, Salah's got Man United away. Might not be that bad of a fixture. And then obviously in 33, it's that loot in a home game. Now that week in particular, I think most people will probably want to go for Haaland. Um, obviously, Saka would have Villa at home that week and Salah would have Palace at home. So you don't have to go for Haaland. But if I've got him, I'm definitely captain him in that week, even without the, sorry, even with the Real Madrid games. So potentially before that, you don't need him, right? You could sell him this week. And if you've got the bottle to go through with it, just maybe bring him back in game week 33. And if not, just go without him until you wildcard or until City double down the line, whatever it might be, till they possibly go out of Europe, which is probably unlikely. Whatever you want to do, obviously you can do it. But I think there's plenty of games in there where he could do really well. And as I said at the start of this question, we still have not seen him rested. So I think people that are going without him because they don't think he's going to play, I don't think that's the right reason to do it. If you think there's other captaincy options, there's better ways to spend the money perfectly fine going without Haaland um but a minutes thing I just don't think there's much of an issue there not right now anyway so I wasn't sure whether to include this question because it's quite similar to the one I answered already about having nine players and zero free transfers but I feel like in that case it might just be someone looking to save the free hit and in this case it might be someone without a free hit at all so they've already used it at some other point so any tips for people without a free hit who can only field three to four players this week now, to be honest with you, the advice is pretty much exactly the same. Um, I view points hits in a blank game week as just a two-point risk. I know that's not completely sound logic, but that's generally how I view it. So if you can get a player in this week that you think will repay that hit, or they'll be useful to you over the next few weeks, that is someone worth taking a hit for. How many hits should you take? That really depends on your team. Some people might need a minus four. If you've only got three or four players, you might need minus 12, minus 16. That could be viable. For certain people's teams right um let's just assume you've got no wild card at that point i think lots of hits are probably worth it i've said this before i get a lot of questions and comments on videos that say things like look that video was great for people with chips but what about those of us without them and it's quite hard to give like an overview of what you should do because what your team looks like will play a big part in what players and stuff you should bring in how many hits you should take and i know that's the same for people with chips as well right your team is going to depend on what your chip strategy is but it's easier to give an overview right or, or kind of more generic advice if someone says to me they've got bench boost wildcard free hit then i can easily say 
either wild card now, save your free hit for later, bench boost in 37, or free hit now, save your wild card, set up for the bench boost later. That's just generic advice that you could give. For someone without chips, it's a little bit more difficult. But as an example, right, if I've got three to four players this week, and let's say none of them are Spurs players, and I've got no free hit, no wild card to bail me out later, I'm taking a hit for, I'm using one of my transfers on Son, I'm taking a hit for Madison, I'm taking a hit for a Spurs defender. That is what I would be doing, right? So we're already up to a minus eight, and that gets us to what, six to seven players. If I haven't got Ivan Tony, I'm probably taking a hit for him as well. So that's already a minus 12. And there might be a, another couple of players that are worth it to you as well. Because if you haven't got other chips down the line, well, Spurs, not only did they have a good fixture this week, they then have Luton, then it's West Ham in 31, it's Forest in 32. And with Tony, like he doesn't double at all this season as far as I know, but he won't blank either. And he's got Burnley away, then Man United at home, Brighton at home, Villa away, Sheffield United at home. Good fixtures all the way through. You'd expect him to start in all those games. And the good fixtures run for the whole season. So if you've got no chips whatsoever, you have to accept that you're not going to be able to have 11 players every time there's a blank game week. And you're not going to be able to have 11 double game weekers in every double game week. Uh, sorry, in every double game week as well. You're going to have to be a bit more balanced. So if that means that you get Tony now, and that means down the line you can't have three double game week forwards, that doesn't necessarily matter. Unless at the time, of course, a transfer on him or a hit is then worth it again. But you've just got to be a little bit more a little bit more balanced, I would say, over these. Like people with free hits and wild cards, you know, they'll have eleven players this week and they might have a full set of eleven double game weekers in a double. That just happens, right? Because they've got their chips left. So yeah, my advice for anyone that doesn't have eleven players this week is consider hits. You don't have to have a full eleven sorry, a full eleven a full set of eleven playing players is what I'm trying to say. But you should get as close to that as possible to the point where any more players you bring in are just not going to benefit you down the line, or you're going to have to sell someone that's pretty good. So I know that's a quite a similar answer to the previous question, but I just wanted to cover that for anyone without chips. So just quickly on my own team, I have now activated the free hit chip. So if you just see below my team here, free hit active. I'm not really sure why I left it so long. The weather forecast for Burnley in London doesn't look too bad. So hopefully there's no last minute matches called off or anything like that. And the team is no shock whatsoever. As we've said all week, most free hit teams that you see are going to be exactly the same. We only have eight teams to pick from. Uh, so Flecken in goal, Doughty and Porro in defence. I do currently have Regulon as well, even though he's still flagged. I think I'll probably stick with him unless there's a last minute panic on the deadline stream tomorrow that he might not start or there's last minute information or something like that. I just think if he does play, he is one of the best defenders this week. So he's in. Then I've got Bowen, Madison, and Son. As I've said all week, they're locked in. I've got Alanga next to them because I'm pretty sure he's going to start. I think him versus Gibbs White is an interesting discussion. Ultimately, here's what I would say. If Forrest don't get a penalty in that match uh, against Luton, I would expect Alanga to score more points than Gibbs White because his underlying numbers from open play are just better. But it might be that Gibbs White goes and scores a goal from open play and gets a penalty and absolutely smashes a langer. You just don't know. At some point, you've just got to make the decision and stick with it. Will I definitely have a langer in this team? No. But right now, I quite like the look of him. I think Gibbs White is like, at least stats-wise, right, a slightly better version of Douglas Deweese. He's a bit more attacking from open play and has penalties to fall back on. I know Douglas Deweese, by the way, is going to absolutely smash it in game week 29. The one week where I could get him for a one-week punt only, and I still don't do it. He's definitely going to uh, punish me. I can see it already. But basically, I think Alanga from open play is just going to be a bit better. There's definitely some risk there. Even if I'm confident Alanga starts, he might not play past 60, 70 minutes. But I think right now I'm kind of okay to um, take that risk. And then up front, I've got Morris, Watkins, and Tony in a 3-4-3. It might be that by deadline tomorrow, I put Morris first bench and play Kudus instead, who's um, currently in the squad. I might have Pakatar. I might have Gibbs White. I'm not fully decided. As I said on my team selection video, it's just going to be a last-minute gut feeling that locks in those final couple of positions. And then the other players on the bench are Ariola, goalkeeper, uh, Nico Williams for Forrest against Luton away, and then Luca Dean against West Ham away because Moreno started last night. So presumably, Luca Dean will come back in. There's not a huge amount of other defenders um, that I can fit in anyway. Maybe 
like someone from West Ham, like so foul, possibly could go on the bench. Hopefully, I'm not going to need it right because I've picked 11 starters, but it's not a guarantee. So, look, again, I could sit here for another 30 minutes and not be fully locked in. Like, Kudus could become um, Pakatar, and do I think that looks any better? You know, at the deadline tomorrow, I might think, do you know what, actually, Pakatar in that squad does look quite nice. I'm just going to go with him. That's what it's going to come down to. I think my my general advice with free hit is the outcome is probably not going to be as bad as you're fearing. I think because it's only one or two spots, you can go round and round in circles and just feel like you're going to make a terrible decision. The reality is so many of the picks outside of the core players are quite similar, that you're just taking a punt and hoping for the best. Alanga could smash Gibbs White. It could be the other way around. Kudas could smash Pakatar. It could be the other way around, right? You just don't know. Um, so I would say try and not overthink it too much, but I know most of you will, just like I will too. So that's my team. I am free hitting. I'm captain in Son. Tony is my vice captain. I don't see that changing. With the doubts around Watkins, I'm definitely not going to put the captain's armband on him. Otherwise, I don't think there's too much more to say. Hopefully, I'll be doing a deadline stream tomorrow. It's a later deadline than normal. Um, so it's half one UK time. So I'll be starting around 12. If you've enjoyed that video, give it a like. Hit that subscribe button. Rate five stars on podcast. Otherwise, I'll leave it there. Good luck in game week 29. And I'll catch some of you tomorrow on the deadline stream.